So yeah, I did get hit. It is not clickbait. Um, I am mostly okay uh, physically and mentally. Um, I still rode the next day. Uh, I'd be lying to say I wasn't looking over my shoulder a little bit and I'm still not looking over my shoulder a bit more than usual, but in general, fine. Um, cut on my hand, bruise on my shoulder, um, some rug burn type stuff on my leg. But basically I was coming home from shooting an event in downtown Akron. It was fairly late at night, it was dark. It was between 11 and midnight. Um, I was pretty close to home. I was coming straight down Main Street, a road I usually don't ride, but it's a very wide road. And at that time of night, there's no traffic lights on, which is a big reason I avoid it. One of the reasons, which I'll get into later. But I was coming, uh, we'll get out there and I'll show the exact spot in a minute, but the road kind of rises as it heads towards a bridge and all of a sudden something happened. I didn't even know what it was. I kind of realized I had my foot down and I was like, and I looked up and I saw a car speeding off over the high level bridge. I was like, oh, I just got hit. Then I'm like, oh, I need to catch him. I went to turn the pedals, they wouldn't turn. Basically, um, I think what happened is you never know in those moments, or if you've ever been hit, it could be very uh, disorienting. But I basically think the car came by and sideswiped me. I think the mirror might have hit my bars and kind of actually jerked me away from the car, which is a good thing. Um, I found their mirror, so I took their mirror off. But, you know, judging by where the bruises were, and my shoe was actually um, black from the rubber of the tire. So I think basically they sideswiped me but pushed me away. So I think the rug burn was from my jeans on their door. Maybe, hard to say, but the force of the ride was, or the force of the hit was pretty strong. And I could show you because it actually bent my crank arm. Um, ruined the spindle on my pedal for comparison. You know, there's the replacement one that needs to go on there. But yeah, so twisted the metal. Um, Ruined the axle um, on my pedal, but and my chain ring's a little wobbly, but didn't brand my frame, didn't ruin the wheels. Uh, amazing that more didn't go wrong with that. But um, yeah, so I'm here, I'm fine. Um, let's go out on the road and I can sh show you exactly um, where and what happened. And then I'll talk a little bit more about Akron's Main Street, which is State Road here and the problems with riding your bike in this city, and then just some of my thoughts on riding your bike um, out there in traffic in general. So it was somewhere around here where I got hit. You'll be able to see the cars behind me just absolutely speeding. The speed limit here is 35. Um, that's the bridge over the Cuyahoga River where, and on the other side it becomes 25. I can't blame cars for speeding a little bit here though because the road is built like an interstate. Um, it just absolutely is. It's impossible to go 25 on the other side. I can barely do it when I'm driving my car. But I know it's a wide angle lens, but the road has a rise here and then it drops down. Um, and it also narrows at the same point. The thing is the bridge didn't used to be here. It used to be over on this other street called Howard. So there's kind of a weird angle here. So the person coming down, they would have, uh, and they sideswiped me about right here. Um, here's a dramatic reenactment. But so you can see how this road lends itself perfectly to the fact that um, somebody was probably either drunk or on their cell phone. I have a light on the back of my helmet. I have the light on the back of my bike. Um, so I should have been pretty visible even though it was late at night. When it happened, I didn't even realize what went on that I was hit. Um, I, it took me a minute because I didn't fall down, but then I went to pedal and I couldn't turn the pedal around. My crank arm was bent. I looked up and I saw the car just flying across the high level bridge. Um, I couldn't go anywhere, I couldn't go try and catch them. So that was that. And uh, I came back in the morning and I found the mirror somewhere around here. So I've been keeping my eye out for the, the person with the busted mirror. So in general, I'm someone who's pretty comfortable riding anywhere. Um, and I used to ride on 
the main streets all the time when I first moved here to the studio um, and I was uh, figuring out where to go. I didn't really care. I'm like, it's my right to ride wherever I want, which is true, um, except for interstates, you know, and so I would do that. And then it got to the point where I found myself, I would be riding places, then I'd be constantly frustrated with the close passes, everyone pulling up to get ahead of you before a stop sign or a stoplight and all that kind of stuff. And I'd get where I was going and I'd be frustrated. And I realized I'm living the life that I lived when I drove my car everywhere, where you're just like always mad, like oh, something's always going wrong. And I'm like, you know, one of the reasons I ride my bike is to not be like that. You know, I also do it for the health and environmental reasons and, you know, a plenty of other reasons, but that's one of the big ones is I just enjoy my life more at that pace. So I started to come up with better routes to ride my bike on, you know, cutting through um, neighborhoods like this. And a lot of times the routes are better, you know, Main Street in Akron has a bunch of uh, traffic lights. The reason I was out there that night is on Main Street is because they would have been off at that time of night. So I started to figure out a lot of times I could get there quicker, but even if I do go out of my way a little bit, I'm happier. So that's just kind of something I do now. I have these better routes to get around and it makes my life much more enjoyable. If I have a destination and I need to get on some roads that are busier, or I'm fine doing it, but still I would prefer just to enjoy myself, go through neighborhoods and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the thing though that I wanna talk about too, which might seem a little controversial. I saw that Rivendell, I think it was their Instagram account, they had posted this thing, it was like a cartoon or a meme about painted bike lanes and how worthless they are. I wanna say I absolutely disagree with that. Um, let's start, so downtown Akron, Main Street down there is huge and wide. Um, going back, there used to be a cross-cut canal that ran down the middle of it, so it's just a very wide road. Down there now, they've just redone it. They had like 10 million in grants and they put in these protected bike lanes and that's great. It's great, it'll be awesome when more residents live downtown. Akron's picking back up for that. And I could see, yeah, you have a five and an eight year old, um, awesome. So they'll be able to ride in protected bike lanes protected bike lanes are the gold standard, right? We still have some stuff to do with working out um, some of the intersections. Uh, if you look at some of these intersections out there, uh, we still have these stupid one-way roads with cars just blasting down them. So, you know, not very good visibility when you're on your bike. They have these little bike traffic lights, fine. Um, they help a bit. But the second you get outside of downtown either way, you're thrown into like the two one-way streets on either side. So we have this Y bridge from when they were doing the, you know, turning our city like most Midwest cities into car cities, exactly what they did to Detroit, you know, throw an interbelt through the black neighborhoods, um, turn the streets one way with underground parking decks so the people could get back and forth to the suburbs as quickly as possible. Uh, they thought it was gonna speed people into the city. What it did is it sped people out of the city. Um, but. You know, so it has, it's failed. So we have situations like this where our other two streets, the two main arteries through downtown Akron are one way. We have all of these traffic lanes and no bike lanes. One, all the studies show turn these back to two-way traffic and the city will thrive. As you can see here, nobody is walking. There's no pedestrians. There's no retail activity. No restaurants go on these streets. They become wastelands. It's a total failed system. But I'm still saying, even if you're not gonna do that, why not take away one of these lanes and give us a bike lane? So back to my painting the thing, paint us a shoulder. If there's some legal reason you don't have the room for a bike lane, give us a shoulder. So when people say like these painted bike lanes don't do anything, I have to say that's ridiculous. How often do cars go left of center and crash into oncoming traffic? How often do cars run into parked cars that are parallel parked on the side of the road? Does it happen? Can it happen? Of course it can. But cars stay between the lines. When you drive your car, you stay between the lines, right? When you ride your bike in a bike lane, you probably stay in that bike lane if you're, uh, you know, live somewhere that has painted bike lanes. So to me, it's like, give me that. It's better than nothing. So as you can see here on the Y bridge, this painted line, I understand again, the family with the five and the eight year old is not gonna wanna ride across this bridge. The way this bridge is built, of course, um, is to service those two one-way streets. So it's horrible cars go 50 I've seen cars over 60 miles an hour on this road it's our uh, this bridge it's 
Yeah, it's awful, but it's here, and this shoulder is better than nothing. The one side of the bridge does have a protected sidewalk, and that's where I see your people who are, you know, you want, who are commuters, um, probably not commuters by choice, commuters because the bike is the best way to get around and they don't have a car. Um, but those people don't come over to this side of the Y bridge and ride this lane, and I understand that they ride on the protected sidewalk. Anyways, so another problem though with this lane is the mess to get to this bridge that has the bike lane. There's no bike lanes. You have to go through all these. This traffic cars always almost hit me there. It's insane. And then this bike lane ends <laughs> on a curve and just dumps you into the traffic with cars that I just like the cars I was just talking about that are doing 50 miles an hour over this bridge. So ridiculous. Of course, Akron used to have a Main Street bridge, this beautiful old viaduct that had two way traffic from two way streets on Main Street and went to the other side over here. And again, uh, just horrible planning decisions, the planning decisions every city was making uh, at that time in the 60s and 70s or whatever. I think the bridge went in in 81. But then you get into North Hill here, it's still North Main. And again, there's all the road widens back out after the bridge. There's cars that could park on the side. They could still have two lanes in each direction on Main Street, which it doesn't need. Um, but they could and still paint us a little bike lane. Again, it would make a difference. It would move cars over. It works. <laughs> like, can you still get hit? Of course you could. Um, but don't tell me that doesn't work. Don't tell me it's not a better thing. Instead of riding down Main, what I do is I cut across all these lanes of traffic, have to be real careful, obviously, through this hospital and back into the neighborhood roads. Like I said, during the day, I enjoy my ride better that way. I don't have to stop at the stoplights then. And there's only, there's less stop signs in this, this one. I found the residential streets that have less stop signs than there would be stoplights. So that's just the way I get around. And I think it's the way that makes a lot more sense. I essentially live on Main Street. It's just when you cross over the river from Akron, you cross over the Cuyahoga River, you go from Akron to Cuyahoga Falls the road name changes to state and that's where I am. And it's a good thing it's right there because I had to walk my bike home that night, obviously, and it wasn't that far that I had to go. So where you do cross over into the falls, I was really annoyed because they repaved this street just a few years ago. And it would have been so easy to make it one lane in each direction with a bike lane on each side of the street and a turn lane in the middle. The street has a 25 mile an hour speed limit. And as I said, when I've shown where I got hit, there's no way you're gonna drive your car 25 on this street. I have a hard time driving my car 25 miles an hour on state road. They build it to look like an interstate. It's two lanes, the double yellow line down the middle. No one is thinking this is a 25 mile an hour road. It's absolutely ridiculous. And I'm not saying they should raise the, raise the speed. You know, if they wanna go 30 or 35, I wouldn't even be mad about it. But the thing to do is to build the road for the speed that it is. So yeah, I absolutely believe that the white lines painted on the side of the road matter. They would help us out tremendously as cyclists. And, you know, the protected bike lanes, you know, a bike path, um, nothing is going to compete with the safety of that. But when you train people, you know, where to drive their car and where the bikes are, it's way better. And I also sympathize with the idea of drivers. They don't know when the bike lanes are gonna start and end. They don't know the rules around here about where bikes are supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. You know, it's just a whole, it's a whole mess that doesn't need to be like this. So anyways, I'll close in saying, as you see here, like, I break traffic laws. If you watch my videos, you'll watch me break traffic laws. Um, most of the time, I'm doing it to keep myself safer. If there's a light that is, that I could tell, you know, there's it's just a street coming in from the one side and there's no car there, I'm gonna run it. I'm not going to let traffic build up behind me while I sit at a red light and then have to get blasted by by a bunch of cars. I don't care. I'm gonna go up this ramp <laughs> in the wrong direction and cut across to the sidewalk. I'm not gonna ride that bridge that has zero shoulders and cars rip across it. Um, I've done it before, that's where I was heading the night I got hit. So that's, I don't care, I'm gonna keep myself safe until um, drivers respect cyclists. I am not gonna respect the laws that are made for drivers. So that's just the way it is and that's the way I'm going to live my life. So um, I'm going to keep myself safe and that's my number one priority. I'm gonna keep my momentum and that's my priority. So yeah, when drivers say cyclists are unpredictable, drivers are unpredictable. Um, if you drive a car, and I'm sure almost everyone I know who rides bikes with me also drives cars, uh, 
but also all driver speed. I see most drivers roll the stop signs. Uh, I see everyone speed through that yellow light to get there so they don't get caught at the red. So whenever I hear some driver say, well, all cyclists do this, um, yeah, everybody breaks the rules no matter what side of the um, aisle you're on. So yeah, I'm gonna continue to ride. I'm gonna continue to ride almost every day and I'm not gonna be scared by it. And one, if one of these bastards finally takes me out, then that's on their conscience. But gonna end the video there. Um, check out the swag shop down below. Uh, it's always, we've been making some cool stuff with some cool artists. So if you're interested in any um, cool cycling gear, gear, you know, help me out. Thinking about doing a pre-order on these guys. So um, let me know what you think. If you think this is cool, maybe we'll do a pre-order. And if you're interested, we could do it that way. All right, I will catch you in the next one.